just such a big world out there. She hasn't had a chance to see what it has to offer. You remember what it was like being in love, don't you? <laughs> what, at 20? All romance and no reality. And with Sheila, the reality came too late. You know, kind of like a hangover. I am not ready for this. Stephen, are you ready? Oh, great. Stephen! Yeah, I am ready. How do you feel about Mexican? I feel helpless. I mean, my kid is living in some hole in the East Village. Her husband, the sculptor, he doesn't make a dime. Does he try to do something about it, make his life better? No. He thinks his poverty gives him the right to stew in his own arrogance. Well, maybe what he ought to do is try to sculpt that chip off your shoulder. You know, maybe someday you'll be a father, pal, and then I don't think you're going to run around giving out the advice quite so easily. Well, I'll tell you what. Until then... No charge, okay? What are you doing? You're stalling here. Come on, you're gonna be late. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Hey, maybe you can come with me. Nah, no, forget it. Here, why don't you just get dressed, okay? Let's just try to get through this evening without you two playing. It's gonna be you. No, it's always me. It's it's always in my head. If I ever get over my bad mood and click my heels together three times, this will all turn into cornfields and blue skies. I didn't think that's what you wanted. There's plenty of things you don't bother to think about. You're the one that said you understood about my work and what it meant to me, Lauren. The only one. Well, I'm not the only one anymore. I'm pregnant. Are you angry? Are you happy? Talk to me. I'm happy. I'm happy, baby. I wasn't expecting it so soon. It's gonna change things. For the better. Because this baby comes from our loving each other. People do it all the time. Oh, damn it! So. Nothing like a carton of cigarettes after a great meal, huh? How you two doing? Great. Hi. This is just our weekday place. Weekends we go to our state in the Hamptons. You know, I remember what starting out is like. Listen, honey, I was thinking. I got all this furniture that's collecting dust in a house in Jersey that I rent to a friend. Maybe you guys could use a few things. I'm just trying to help you out. We can take care of ourselves, Mr. Burroughs. It was Dan. Dan, all right? Come on, Mr. Burroughs. Now, I'm not threatening your pride. Daddy, Stephen only, only means... Yeah, I should mind my own business. You government guys just can't stand the idea of right to privacy, can you? Why don't you just bug our apartment and find out how we're doing? Your apartment's got enough bugs. Daddy! You know, this might come as a big surprise to you, but you are not the first artist who's had to struggle, and I am not the first father who's been worried about his daughter. She's my wife. I'll worry about her. Yeah, well, she was my daughter before she was your wife. Please stop it! I feel like some piece of territory, and you're both trying to stake a claim. This was supposed to be a nice dinner with three consenting adults. We're two adults short. You two fighting about my coming over? Let me tell you something. That is my daughter, and I can see her whenever I want, whether you like it or not. I don't have to deal with you. So you can strike that off your argument list right now. The world doesn't revolve around you. This is great. It, when it's convenient for you to be a father, you preach fatherhood. For most of her life, you weren't even there for her. And you couldn't make your own marriage work. Don't come in here and mess up mine. I'm in love with my wife. Shouldn't somebody go see if she's all right? 
She's not all right. She's pregnant. No, she's still crying in there. She knows I'm here for her. You're miles away. You know, you believe it or not, I know how that feels. It's an obsession. Start from there. Be careful you don't get lost in it, Stephen. You get dizzy from the lack of oxygen. You start to lose touch with reality. Other things, well... Other things aren't as important as they should be. What I do is important, Dan. And I'm not giving it up. Not like you did. I don't have to defend what I did with my music. I'm just telling you, you're going to have to find a balance between your artistic inspiration and your practical obligations, or it's going to eat you alive. There's room for both if you allow it. Yeah, I see how you made room for both. You do what you got to do to get by, son. You know, you got a lot of talent. And you got guts. And that makes it harder to ask for help. Well, listen, I know guys in business. I'll make some calls. Maybe I can find you a job. I got a friend in construction. He's got connections down here. I'm gonna give him a try first. But thanks. Fair enough. Congratulations, Dad. Thanks, Grant. Cake, patty cake, bakers, man, make it, make it fast as you can. Make it, roll it, just, oh, like, just, <laughs> Hi, son, how are you? What's the matter? He was just saying hello. Come on, let's try it again. Patty cake, patty cake, bakers, man. Your friend Mike told me you were a welder, but I need a bolting man. You ever worked the iron before? No, but I learned fast. You won't have time to learn, just do as you're told. The city's breathing down my neck to guarantee their schedule to the government. Now I gotta make up time. I gotta expose skin out there. Well, I have concrete deck already. You get my point? Good, because that sucker's gonna get topped out in three months. It pays 20 bucks an hour. You can make $1,000 a week on overtime. Now, here's the deal. I got these minority quotas shoved down my throat in these government jobs. Well, what are you gonna do? The union doesn't like it either, but they play nicely with the government when they need their image airbrushed, huh? I got a guy. Martin S. Got hurt in his downtime. He's taking a breather. You can work under his name. I'll cash his checks for you. That's 75 bucks a week. Check cashing fee. You got a problem with that? Nope. Good. Because that's how you make nicey with me. Ready? I'm a welder, not a bolter. I can't drive him any faster. Well, you better hurry up. You're going to be driving taxi. Now, you finish with that one. Move on down to the next one. You don't have to tighten every one of them. What happens if I don't torque every bolt? I'm the foreman, pal. Let me worry about that, huh? This new guy up here, a young fella. He's a bit of a eager beaver. I think you ought to have a little talk with him. Hey, kid. A structural engineer? No, but I know something about metal and tensile strength. I can read your spec sheets. If I don't torque every bolt, those beams aren't going to hold. They'll hold. For how long? 
I'm only worried about the first hundred years. If I don't torque them, it's going to put too much stress on the steel. You know what stress is in this business? It's bids and schedules and supplies and labor. It's the city screaming about their precious pre-leases and cutting into your profit margins with their penalty clauses. You see that building? Maybe one of 20 I put up in this city. This building will last for as long as it has to. Stop worrying. Because worrying is for the unemployed. We got your subscription to the magazine. It comes along with a gift certificate for sheep cell treatments for anti-aging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really funny, guys. <clears throat> hey, Cramps, lighten up. We want to help you celebrate. You're taking this kind of hard, aren't you? You know, if you guys don't mind, I think I'd like to celebrate alone, okay? Yeah, sure. Fine. Got it. Hey, it's on me. Anybody who tells the big Irish man how to do his job, better get real drunk. Thanks. Hello. Who do you know to get work on a Martinez's cart? I needed a job. Martinez got hurt on his downtime. Morgan needed a fill in. Martinez got hurt on the beam. Security cable broke. Hit the deck. And Mr. Morgan and his bosses, they don't want no trouble. So they buy Martinez a nice little vacation in Florida. You mean they paid him off? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Maybe they closed us down. I need work. I got work. What about your friend Martinez? That guy got hurt. What's he gonna do when the money runs out? Martinez's name stays on the payroll. Keeps all his benefits. Union don't know. Tax man don't know. Martinez getting a nice stand. He's doing our friend a big favor. It sounds like we're all doing Morgan a bigger favor. I don't like seeing people get taken advantage of. Amigo, that kind of thinking can make a big problem. Just be happy you got a job. You got a baby to pay for. I don't know the first thing about being a father. Who does? So you don't look too happy about it? No, it's great. It's great. It's just we didn't exactly plan it so soon. Well, maybe not you. My wife would never do that. You know for sure? Yeah. We talk about things like that. It doesn't happen by talking. How many kids you got? Four. Four? First a daughter, and then more daughters. We had to keep trying for a boy. Pero los mujeres, they make you feel like a daddy. Pero los niños, the boys, they make you feel like a man. I gotta move my stuff and make a room for a kid. I don't even know what I need. First of all, you need a crib. You need a changing table. You need a chest of drawers for all this stuff. This stuff is expensive. Come on, take the money. And how about toys? A kid needs to play with some toys, right? You know what diapers cost these days? It's like throwing away a dollar every time the kid goes. How do you know? Well, I passed the store on the way over here. I appreciate the offer, but I can't. We want to make it on our own. Come on, this can be just between us. I don't keep secrets from my husband. What, are you gonna let his pride get in the way of the child's well-being? Nothing is gonna get in the way. Hi. Hi. How'd it go, honey? Good. It's fine. You gonna stay for dinner? No, no, I can't. Just came by to see my baby. Wish you congratulations on your first day of work. Thanks. I have some work to do in the other room. Excuse me. What about dinner? I'll eat later. He doesn't give an inch. It's a good thing I've had practice at loving difficult men. You know, if you, if you feel like you need me, I, I want you to know you can come to me. I wasn't exactly stellar in the parenting department. I want to be better at this than I was at being a dad. You don't have to apologize, Daddy. we got a lot of years ahead of us. Oh. Mwah. Bye, sweetheart. Bye.
amigo. You better get going on to the next team. Anoche la Nueva York Loterría fue número 6, 10, 15, 24, 30 y 32. El gran premio fue un 6 millones de dólares. Ahora los números otra vez. 6, 10, 15, 24, 30 y 32. Ahora muchachos, vamos a escuchar. Come on, come on, Rocco, come on, let's go, let's go, party. Ahora muchachos, vamos a escuchar. Vamos a escuchar. Vamos a escuchar. Where's Morgan? Ed leave. Said he'd take care of you on Monday. I worked all week. I gotta sit with this till Monday? You can sleep with it for all I care. Next! I never used to think much about tradition. Makes more sense as I get older. Mom! Oh, it's beautiful. Your father and I brought you home from the hospital in that. <laughs> you look wonderful, baby. How's Stephen? Fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Men take this rite of passage stuff very seriously. God, your father went out and got dead drunk when he found out I was pregnant. Well, Daddy's trying to be a part of all this. It's sweet. I don't think he's very happy about the baby. Well, your father was always very talented at hiding his feelings. I'm sure he's happy for you. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I can't see him thrilled about being called Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, it's how you and Stephen feel that's important. How'd your dinner go? Oh. <sighs> that good, huh? They don't know how alike they are. Yeah. Well, they may not know it, but they sense it. That's why they fight. Why do you look so tired? Oh, I've been interviewing for jobs. I had to leave the print shop because of the fumes. Stephen has a job. Well, you worked when you were pregnant. Right? You worked during your whole marriage. The whole marriage was work. No, I... I didn't want to find myself a grieving widow with no skills, trying to support myself on a dead cop's pension. Besides, in those days, if a woman didn't espouse independence, she was an embarrassment to her species. What's wrong, baby? Did you ever do anything that you thought was a betrayal of Daddy? I'm not talking about sex. Yeah. I'd say the worst betrayal was being angry at Dan for three years before I told him. And if you had to do something that you thought would help him, even though you knew he'd be angry about it? I'd do it. And then I'd tell him about it in bed. But I'd try it out on your old mother first. Lauren's worried about Stephen. He's getting paid in somebody else's name. Lauren saw the check. Fraudulent impersonation doesn't exactly qualify as an OCB investigation. Oh, don't give me your bureaucratic list of rules and regulations. This is your daughter. Don't tell me what my responsibilities to my daughter are. Somebody should. Well, not you. I earned that right. I was there. I raised her. You were terrified of even holding her. She was never a gift to you. She was a burden. And you're doing the same thing now. You're making her pay because your ego can't deal with becoming a grandfather. It's not my ego I'm worried about. It's Lauren. Then help her find out what's going on. Just don't bring her name into this. You don't want anything to cause problems between her and Stephen. You. you know, Dan, what you really ought to be worrying about is not the fact that you're getting older. It's that you're 45 years old and you're still alone. Had a gorgeous day, huh? Where's your grandson? I saw you playing with him the other day. He went home with his parents. They live. You know, my daughter's gonna have a baby soon. You're too young. 
It's my first. You know, I bet it's great becoming a grandfather, though, huh? I mean, you get to teach them all the stuff you didn't get right yourself. Yeah, and they never say thank you. <laughs> they come to your house for Thanksgiving. My wife slaves over them. The little brats sit in front of the TV like zombies. They change channels all the time. I can't even watch a ball game. Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> when they get older, they'll want to borrow the car. They'll want to borrow money. <laughs> little ingrates. They think you owe them. Well, I, uh, I gotta get back to work. You, uh, have a nice day. Nice. <laughs> nice is when the family is gone. Don't kid yourself. This is nothing to look forward to. So long. Your son-in-law's working under false union documentation. Probably the only way the kid could find a job. Yeah, it's Tommy Morgan. He's got Tommy Morgan Construction. He works as his own general contractor, and it's mostly on federal HUD projects. Mm. Which, in a significant number of cases these days, is considered a license to steal. Steven's working under a false name with a fake Social Security number for bogus union benefits that some deadbeat named Hector Martinez is collecting. You get anything on this Martinez yet? I'm working on it. Guys, guys, please. We, you know, Dan, you were bitching about this kid when he didn't have a job. Why don't you just leave him alone and let him earn his bread? You know, I didn't ask for your opinion. No, but you wanted me to hold your hand when you were nervous about seeing her in the first place. You abandoned the right to run Lauren's life when you left your family. Well, I'm trying to change that now. No, you're not. You're trying to take control. She fell in love with somebody without your permission, and you can't stand it. Oh, come on, Vince. No, no, no. no. Let him finish. He's on a roll. Now, she may make a few mistakes, but they're hers to make, not yours. You know, you're putting your own guilt out on her marriage. You know, maybe someday when you're a parent, you'll figure out that understanding this Freudian crap doesn't make the job any easier. I'm not looking at deep meanings here. What I see is a kid who's trying to live up to his responsibilities. You can't force him to do it your way. But I can sure as hell try and protect my daughter from the consequences of him doing it his way. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, why don't you tell me what they are? Because the only consequences I see is you missing out on your last chance to be a caring father to your daughter. You can't even take any joy in the fact that she's having a baby. You make it sound like being a grandfather is some kind of a death sentence. <sighs> Man, you know, you're right. All of a sudden, I keep thinking about being closer to dying than to being born. I see myself sitting on a park bench watching the world go by. I never thought about getting old. You're getting old. I'm getting old. We're getting old. At least you're going to be able to grow up with your grandchild. By the time that happens to me, he's going to be screaming in my hearing aid, wiping a drool off my chin. Yeah, at least your grandchildren will be able to see their grandfathers. Mine never will. But what am I going to say to this kid? What do I do? You go to the store, you buy a teddy bear. You smile, he cries. You coo, he smiles. You're off to a hell of a start. Is that what you did with your boy, Frank? If I was an expert on familial affairs, I would not be sleeping alone in a house that I rent from you. I wouldn't be seeing my kid every other weekend. And I wouldn't be sitting by the phone waiting for the bitch to call, hoping she's asking to get back together again. Oh, man, what are you guys? I'll give you both a glass of hemlock, put you out of your misery. Will you please? You drive me nuts. Well... At least we're good at keeping other people's houses in order, huh? Well, that along with the gold watch at retirement should make sitting on the park bench a real gratifying experience. Man. Hey, I'll meet my wife during lunch, so if I'm late, no problem. We cover you. Hey, that's the third time this week, man. These bolts are bogus. Somebody's got to do something. Go we'll meet your wife. Stop worrying about things that aren't your problem anymore. Oh. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's so like... OCB, huh? We rarely have such impressive visitors. I don't know, thank you. Well, you understand you have some union problems. I don't have any problem with those boys. I can't negotiate without government help. In fact, my real beef is federal watchdog slowing down my work. Well, well, the government always likes to know where its money's going. I put up buildings of concrete and steel, not $300 toilet seats in Washington. You wouldn't mind if I had a look upstairs, would you? Suit yourself.
This whole place is crawling with ocean inspectors. This is supposed to be pulled up to 355 foot pounds. I show 240. You boys didn't quite get it. Looks like we got some cheat welds that need replacing. I've got friends in Washington, important ones. I'll bet you do. Florida, too. Remember Hector Martinez? You know, failure to file an on-the-job accident report with OSHA is a federal offense. Hiring labor with false union documentations, failure to make standard safety codes. And if what Martinez says is correct, using inferior overseas bolts and then billing the developer for the cost of the real thing. Since you're a public altruist with a federal contract, that translates to government fraud. Sport. I work here, man. Not anymore, pal. Looks like we're gonna have to red tag this job site. Gentlemen, federal officer, pending structural investigation, the government is closing this site down. I really gave Stephen more credit. He's behaving like a spoiled, petulant brat. I wasn't honest with him. You're only trying to help him. I mean, we were just concerned for his safety. Don't try and justify it. I lied. You didn't lie to him. You just didn't tell him. The sin of omission doesn't make me less a liar. It's like you not telling Daddy about how I used to feel. I don't want my marriage to end up like yours. I'm sorry. Stephen, I just don't want to make the same mistakes. As if we still have a chance. No, 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 no. Come on, now. don't worry. You'll make up. He'll come back. You don't know Stephen? Well, no, but we both know somebody just like him. A man with the soul of the artist and the responsibility of supporting a family is a man at war with himself. I want Stephen to succeed. His art means everything to him. He needs my help, and I want to give him that. Yeah, I know. I wanted to be mother, muse, mistress, and a feminist. It's a very tall order for one woman. You end up getting caught between supporting his dream and easing the burden of his inevitable compromises. But you've got to think of yourself. Because one day you can wake up and, and say to yourself, not even what do I want, but what's left. You heard anything from him yet? The boys, they say somebody spoke to the Federales. Funny thing, you were missing when the trouble went down. Well, I didn't do it, but I am sort of responsible. And I want you to know that I'm sorry. But if you guys want to kick my butt, in all honesty, I wouldn't blame you. 
where we come from. Telling the truth can make you dead. Which is why a lot of us don't have the nerve to apologize. <laughs> come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> so what's happening, man? I gotta get out of the city. What about La Esposa, the baby? That's not gonna work out. If I had a dollar for every time my wife and I had a fight, I'd be one rich man. <laughs> we didn't have a fight. Uh, it was a mistake. Did you find out about another man? No. She lied to me. <laughs> that's all? There are plenty of things my wife don't tell me she don't think I need to know. <laughs> well, that's not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to talk about everything. You talk too much. You're the man. She the woman. Amigo, you got a problem? You go home. You take her to bed. You raise the iron. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to shut the place down. I should have known you dragged the government into this. Well, what did you expect me to do? You come to me for help. I expected you to be discreet. I involved other people. I can't control everything. Oh, no. Isn't that what you think you're so perfect at? Spending all your time with machines, talking to faceless voices, managing people's lives you know nothing about. You're treading water, Sheila. And you're treading on this kid. No, it's my fault. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for what I said. You're tough, Shayla. But you're probably right. I'm awful sorry. I really screwed things up. It's okay. It's not your fault. Well, it's got to be somebody's fault. the base set how you're gonna blow these speakers you know I'm trying to enjoy my relaxation here man it's cold in here don't you pay the heating bill I thought the heat was included in the rent well Tommy Morgan found a new career testifying before the ethics committees about federal building contracts defective bolts to old boy politics huh public likes to call it influence peddling oh please toss it you know, I got a weekend off from crime and corruption. I'm trying to enjoy a good book, a good beer, a good Beethoven, a man's castle. Frank, you know, I was thinking about what you told me. You know, about enjoying my grandkid. Well, thanks, Uncle. You're absolutely right. You know, I think you're gonna make a swell grandfather. <laughs> yeah, I want to be close to that kid, you know? Mm. I want to give him the very best of me, like you do with your son. Drake's a good kid. And I want that baby to have things. A nice home, happy parents, fresh air. Well, fresh air never hurt anybody. Good schools, and a backyard to play in. Kind of like this one. You know, Frank, you really helped me figure this out. And you've been a great tenant. 